Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We are going to wrap up both this week and Pride Month exploring Chapel Rowan. I had not heard of this artist before but I was uh, told to check it out by a friend and they requested this uh, Tiny Desk concert. We're going to be looking at the final track from it. Red Wine Supernova. I do think it's pretty cool too that we just got done checking out a Tiny Desk concert. So two of those on the same day is always good. NPR Music kills it with these. So let's dive into it and see what Chapel Rowan is doing today. Two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Very upbeat count off. I dig it. Kind of a bluesy idea on the guitar. A little bit of an uplift there. She was a playboy, oh, a little bit of a country vibe. Like the country pop stuff. Oh, I was going to say they have a glockenspiel, but no, it's the Mellotron. Yeah, the big acoustic guitar, the cello, lots of country vibes. Man, the phrasing of the melody, the way that she'll dip and slide down. Yeah, it's wonderful phrasing. Very fun. A little bit of that country twang, too. Very playful uh, cello part there. Full orchestration part. <laughs> I love it. I'm a huge fan of artists having fun. Yeah, a little bit of ad lib. Well, might not be ad lib, but secondary part of vocals. I love this. Interesting. The ending caught me a little off guard as we had dipped the energy down from the full orchestration on the second part of that chorus to just the vocals on the third run through of that chorus, the energy had already been brought down. It would have made natural sense for the group vocals to cut out and for uh, Chapel to just say the last sentence by herself um, and kind of bring that energy down again, almost like, uh, uh, like a decrescendo, just reducing the volume. But instead of doing it naturally, we just take instruments or performers out over time. Um, but no, we built the energy back up just to abruptly stop. And, you know, there's a playfulness to that. 
<laughs> to to kind of showcase, hey, we're going one way and we're actually going to go a very different way. And we're going to catch you off guard. We're going to pull that rug out from under you. And uh, I think it goes along with a lot of the playfulness that is in this song. To me, it is the defining character of this performance. Um, and the song in general, too. Whether it is those... Those waves starting from a higher note, coming down, going back up. Uh, just really playful, melodic phrasing throughout a lot of this. We have the group vocals in the background, which I think are awesome. Uh, they're playful in the way that it feels like... <laughs> A bunch of people, maybe a little tipsy at the pub, you know, singing a song together. And they're not always all in in tune with each other. They might, maybe not in their case. I, I don't know how trained they are, but at least, you know, the guys at the bar, they're, they're not trained singers. But they're having a blast singing with each other. And that uh, that group sound is present here, too. You can see a smile on all of their faces, uh, Chapel has that uh, that giggle that she has in the second chorus. I'm not sure what she was chuckling about. Maybe there was something that was said or some something someone did or something in the music that doesn't normally happen. Maybe she missed a note or jumped the gun or something. Um, just giggling over a, a little mistake. It's just playful, lighthearted, low stakes performance. And I think it absolutely vibes with this overall song, which is just getting to know somebody, wanting to be with them them um it's real feel good um and ever like i said everything here just come, comes off as playful to me and I, I think it's fantastic from a compositional to a performative level something else that stands out to me here is the country vibes i've never listened to her before in fact i didn't even know her name <laughs> up until a couple of weeks ago so uh, i had no idea what i was in store for here but some of the aesthetic in the thumbnail kind of made me figure we were going to be in a pop realm. And we are. We're in that country pop vibe of, uh, dang, why can't I think of her name? I don't know anymore. <laughs> I'm so bad in the pop realm. I forget, I forget artist names all the time. Give me jazz. I'll tell you some jazz cats. Uh, but yeah, pop country, it really took off uh, like a decade and a half or so ago, maybe a little more. We started to see a popification of Nashville. And this is exactly what it reminds me of. We have the fiddle or the violin. We have a cello in there. We have the big old acoustic guitar. It gives this warm, resonant vibe. And actually, all three of the strings are really warm and resonant. The electric guitar and the keyboard give us a little bit more of that uh, electronic energy and drive. But the string section roots us. And that's what really stands out to me here is the groundedness of this track. It's, uh, you know, it is a bit of a fun, playful song, but it doesn't feel fantastical. It honestly just feels very, uh, in a word, the last time I said this, I got a lot of flack for it, but I hope the context of this fits a little better. The song feels mundane. Not that it is a song that is boring, but that the performance of it and the, the topic of the lyrics all feels like everyday stuff. And the grounding of the song, giving it this very acoustic sound, despite the electric guitar and the keyboards, um... It just feels, again, like a bunch of people having fun at a jam session. Maybe a bunch of people at the bar, a little tipsy, singing their favorite song. That's the kind of vibe I get from the music, just from the textures and timbres of the instruments. And that pairs so well with the playfulness of it. I love that she has these little twangs, these little country twangs in her voice too, where her pitch cracks up a little bit before landing back on the note she wanted. It's a staple of country music, and I feel like it's utilized in a sort of, uh, uh, what would you even call it? A, a way of like signaling, hey, look, I'm a country star. Even though people might not normally talk with that twang or sing with that twang, they, they artificially inject it into their music in order to fit into the country mold. But for her, it feels like it comes off so natural. This is just how she, her, it's just how her voice wants to be. And so once again, it's this natural, grounded, rooted, down-to-earth vibe everywhere. And it just comes together so cleanly and effortlessly. And that combined with the, the playfulness of it makes something that's super infectious. 
Now, I do want to bring up some other stuff here. One of the things I really liked is the contrast in here. And I'm curious if the studio version would be similar because a lot of studio music in any genre that's come out in the last few decades just doesn't have dynamic qualities to it, especially in the volume range. They might make sections that feel softer or quieter, but if you actually look at any sort of volume meter, you'll recognize that it, it's the same volume as the louder parts. And so it's this artificiality of dynamic volume. And here we actually get volume dynamics. And I love this because it's done in the most traditional way. Nobody's singing or playing louder or softer. We just remove some stuff. <laughs> And I love this. The second verse comes around. And the first verse was very full. We had all the string instruments there. We had chords. We had a little bit of melody stuff that was acting as minor counterpoint to her lead vocal melodies. Uh, we had some cool ornamental stuff from the keyboard. We had the glockenspiel sound, which was awesome. I love that in there. But the second verse comes around. And for half of it, it's just the acoustic guitar. And for a moment... If I didn't have this playing in front of me, you know, it would just sound like somebody on a stool playing chords on their guitar and singing along to it. And you don't get more rooted or down to earth than that. But it also acts as a nice point of contrast, the breathability. That's not to say that this song is oppressive in any way. <laughs> uh, the, the many layers, the multiple instruments here are not done in a way to make it feel like an overbearing weight, like maybe death metal might utilize. But <laughs> didn't think I was going to bring up metal in this one, did you? <laughs> um, but it does create moments where maybe this feels like a little bit too much. And you don't recognize that until we reduce everything down to just melody and guitar. And I think those moments make it feel like there's a moment to breathe, like, oh, yeah. This, this song is very energetic, and this reduces the energy down while also presenting contrast, which I think is really important to this track. It's why we have so many melody, melody lines that rise and lower in pitch. I did that opposite. Rise and lower in pitch. That uh, we have different uh, sections where we have multiple types of instruments or just a couple of instruments. It's why the ending works the way that it does with all the layers and then just the vocals. Um, and even just before that, we had a, um, a removing of all the instruments too, and then an adding them all back up. Um, it's just a nice way of creating a pacing and flow throughout the song in the compositional layer by adding and removing instruments. And so it keeps the song feeling fresh and interesting throughout, despite listening to the chorus like three times in here, and, and most of the music being very uh, functionally harmonic. Um, where most of it is designed to be a type of set dressing to her vocal melodies. There really isn't anything in here where the instruments are playing melodic lines that would act as counterpoint. There's no uh, you know, polyrhythmic ideas in here. There's not a lot of complexity on the compositional side, but we do find complexity in the layering. And that allows us to have the dynamic element to it. It gives the song pacing and flow and just contrast from moment to moment. And so even if you're not a fan of this type of music, it won't end up feeling static or repetitive due to the amount of change that we get throughout it. And it's one of the small things that I think elevates her work a little bit above her contemporaries is that there is a lot of con contrast and dynamic writing. Well, I mean, there's a lot of contrast and dynamic writing in this song. I don't want to extrapolate that. Again, the studio version might be a bit more flat as far as the dynamic range is concerned, but at least in this performance, this live setting, there's an understanding that even if the studio version might not have that, that this setting would allow for it, and they went and ran with it, and I absolutely love that. I'm going to take a moment to hit some lyrics and see what's going on there, and then we'll wrap this one up. Lyrically, this is a type of love song. We have uh, the narrator who is uh, really fancying this other person. and uh, But they're, it's, it's all new to them. I really like the first, or sorry, the final line of the first verse. Or sorry, the final two lines of the first verse. It says, I just want you to make a move. Slow down, sit down. It's new. At least I read that as it's new to me. 
I don't know how to go about doing this, so I want you to do it for me. I want you to make the first move, you know. Um, but, you know, take it slow. I'm still acclimating to this. So it could be the person's first relationship. Um, interestingly, though, the pre-chorus comes in and it showcases something very different. So we're going to actually double back on that later. A little foreshadowing, though. The chorus says, baby, why don't you come over? Red wine supernova falling into me. I don't care that you're a stoner. Red wine supernova fall right into me. The idea that, you know, I just I just want to be with you. They're still in the uh, the puppy dog phase of the relationship. And it's like, yeah, I don't care what your history is. I don't care, you know, if there's any problems. Like, I just, I really like you. Let's be physical. <laughs> Fall into me, right? And verse 2 goes into this very straightforward. Uh, it says basically, you know, if you told me you'd want to have sex, like, we'd do it. Because, like... I want that too. It's it's a very horny verse. <laughs> um, and then we go back into the chorus. The bridge is interesting because I think this is the first time we get into some interesting sexual double entendre. Uh, but it talks about wanting to bring this person back to their house. It says, I heard you like magic. Well, I've got a wand and a rabbit. <laughs> Uh, that's, uh, that's good. And it keeps the magic theme going. So I thought that was pretty cool. If you don't know why that's double entendre, uh, if you're old enough, I guess it's a little Google search. Wand and rabbit. I'm pretty sure it's one of the first things that are going to pop up. And that's the whole song. It's like, hey, I like you. You like me. It's kind of new, but, you know, I have these feelings. Let's, let's see where this goes. You know, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to beat around the bush here. Let's just, oh, dang, that's a double entendre. I just want to do this. Um, and like I said, it's, it's a very horny song. But there is this one element of the pre-chorus that I'm not quite sure about yet. It says, I just want to get to know you. Guess I didn't quite think it through. Fell in love with the thought of you. Now I'm choked up, face down, burnt out. And I don't know, that seems negative. It's almost as if the relationship's going too fast. And maybe even that this person isn't who the narrator thought they were. As he says, I fell in love with the thought of you. That who you turned out to be was different than the person you are in my head. And so now I'm in a negative state from that. Choked up, face down, and burnt out. I don't have the energy for this anymore. And I think that adds a, a really interesting element to it. It only shows up twice, and the last half of the song is the chorus into the bridge into the chorus, which is all about the positive, I just want to be with you kind of stuff. So it, it never really gets brought up again, which makes the song feel like it ends on a high note or a happy note, even though this pre-chorus pops up twice about the relationship kind of not working out. I'm curious how that all works, if I'm reading too much into that or... I don't know. Guess I didn't quite think it through. Yeah, problems arose from this. Maybe, despite saying I want to take it slow... The chorus and certainly the bridge kind of putting the foot down on the accelerator and it's possible that that's what ended up making things not work so well. And if this is a person's first relationship as the as a, the image I got from the first verse, it's possible that it was sort of the narrator's fault possibly of just being inexperienced with love and expecting something that it was never going to be simply because they don't have the experience of a relationship. I don't know. That's just kind of what I get out of it. But aside from the pre-chorus, this is a very fun, down-to-earth, feels like a lot of people's first time in a relationship kind of song, that those puppy love uh, days, and just generally wanting to be around the other person constantly, just because of the, the contact high you get from being around them, the the dopamine that comes from, you know, hanging out with them. 
And the music does a fantastic job of capturing that energy in sonic form. Those are my thoughts. Chapel Rowan's Red Wine Supernova. I quite enjoyed this. I'm going to have to check out more of her work and uh, see what else she's doing. Because, uh, you know, artists are very rarely defined by just one song. And, uh, yeah, curious if uh, she goes in any other directions or if she just very, very much roots herself in this pop country stuff. Either way, I enjoyed this and I wouldn't mind more of it. But what are your thoughts about this song? Is there anything that stood out to you? Anything that you'd like to add on to what I said or maybe correct me on? Maybe you just have your own thoughts, opinions, and perspectives about the track. Let me know down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. All right, that wraps it up for today. I'll be back tomorrow, though if you came here, this is your first time at the channel. <laughs> You might not want to stop by tomorrow. We're going to check out an entire album like we do on Saturdays. We're checking out the band Tomb Mold, which I'm pretty sure is death metal of some sort. Very different from what we just checked out. And not always my cup of tea, but I tried to give it my best, uh, my best intentions and an open mind going into it. Uh, Sunday morning, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. 3 p.m. UTC. We're going to have a two-hour live stream. Just come by, chit-chat, hang out. We listen to music. It is a blast. And if none of that sounds interesting, I'll be back next week, Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC as usual. We're going to check out some more music. I don't know what it is. We're just going to check out more of it. Maybe it'll be more pop. Who knows? Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos.